Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In my last tutorial I showed you how to set up and install Mozilla Thunderbird email client using POP3 email accounts also using SSL encryption and I showed you some other basic elements of Mozilla Thunderbird and after completing that tutorial I found that maybe I missed a few things so I'm just doing this little update tutorial just to show you a few extra things that I might have missed in that previous tutorial. So the first thing I need to do is open up Thunderbird and I've got it open here and if you remember in my last tutorial I sent these demo emails just to explain how to create these folders and create a structure to archive all of your emails. So that was what was the last tutorial was really based on and also showed you how to create uh, a custom email signature so when you reply to an email, for example, when I click on this email here and I want to reply to it, uh, you get this signature already pre-written for you. So that was quite a nice feature to have, so you don't have to keep retyping the signature all the time. One thing I did miss though is in the options, so underneath options and account settings, for the email signature, um, in the composition and addressing, we needed to include the signature in the folders as well so that was missing if I click OK what that really means is when you forward an email it also has the signature there as well and that was missing from the last tutorial I did so you should try and get that setting running as well it's quite easy to do just go to your account settings go to composition and then tick this option here as well so in this tutorial I want to show you some of the other features that are available in Thunderbird a lot of the things that I use quite often and right now we're looking at the inbox so if you're not too sure what's going on you should really check my previous tutorial but in this example we're looking at the inbox at the moment and I've got these emails here and the ones that are in bold are ones that I haven't read already and the ones that are not bold are the ones that I've checked I've clicked on them and I've actually read those emails so sometimes you want to check quickly, imagine if you have like 50 emails in here or 25 emails and you want to quickly get a hold of all the ones that you haven't read yet. There's this option up here, it's called quick filter. And when you click on it, you can um, quickly show messages um, which haven't been read or which uh, only show like messages from your address book so if someone sent you an email and they're not in your address book you can filter out all the ones that are in your address book uh, you can do certain things here with these quick filters and I find that quite useful this little option here this quick filter you can show messages that are only have attachments for example in, this, in these demos here I don't really have anything with attachments so it's, if I click that it's not really going to show me anything but um, I can show things like messages that are unread so when I click on that, it's only going to show me these two emails. So I find these tools quite helpful and useful when I'm working on um, in my inbox and I've got a lot of emails and I just want to see the ones that are unread. You can also do something called starred. So you can tick on some of these and you can think of these ones maybe as highlighted as important. Or you can use that start. It could mean anything, to be honest. But it allows you to filter out the ones that are just starred. So if there's something here that you need to do, uh, that's another way of just marking them to remind yourself that you need to do something so that's quite useful as well um, there's another feature called tags and w when you right click on an email you can tag it in a certain color like important work personal to do later uh, and you can make new tags and you can manage them yourself but I tend not really to use this to be honest um, I just leave I, I normally if I want to remind myself to check an email later I just right click on it and then mark it as unread and that's how I do it but you can also right click on the email go to tag and mark it as important then it's going to get highlighted in red and you know that's something urgent or something that you need to do at a later date so you don't forget but I tend not to use that but you know you may you may want to it's up to you and you can click on tag and then it will only show the ones that have been tagged so that's maybe another useful little tip for you let me just undo that now so also, um, sometimes when, you're, when you've got quite a lot of emails in your inbox, and you, sometimes I have quite a few in there before I've archived them away, like in my previous tutorial, I'll show you how to archive all your emails away so your inbox stays quite tidy. But uh, sometimes you want to find an email quite quickly. 
So here in this filtering, you need to click on this quick filter. And after you click on this quick filter, you've got this other filter message. So you can filter out all the messages from here. So if I type in, for example, zero one, it's gonna find anything in the subject that has zero one in it. So this has got zero one and so does this as well. And you can, you can filter by different types of things. So you can filter by the sender, you can filter by the recipients, you can filter by the subject, and you can filter in the body content as well. If you do tick this body option, bear in mind, really the body means anything that's written in the email here. If you tick that option, it does slow down the search process quite dramatically if you've got a lot of emails in your inbox. Um, so I tend not to use the body. Normally the subject will give me enough to find out what I need. So that's another useful tip. And typically what will happen is, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna take this email, for example, you're gonna reply to it. Uh, let's just reply to this one. It's only a demo. So when I reply to it, it's going to send it back to myself, to my other email account. So I'm just going to say, this is a test reply. And you normally write a proper email in here. I'm going to send it. And that email has been sent. You can see it goes purple here, this arrow just telling you that you've already replied to the email. So you can easily see which ones you reply to and not. And I believe if you forward an email, if I forward it to my email account, and if I send this one, it shows a different type of arrow. So the purple ones are being replied to and these ones have been forwarded. Normally I don't use forward, I normally just reply to the email because typically if someone writes you an email, when you reply it, it will automatically put the email address in their email that was uh, when, what they used to send to you. So forwarding, you normally forward an email when you want to send it to someone else. Um, but reply to normally, you know, I normally use this and if I, if I want to send it to someone else, I just delete that email and re replace it with a new email. So that's, that's something you can do there. Also, another tip is um, if, I to, if I were to click on this, this example email here, when I reply, you can actually add more recipients in the list. So you can keep on adding more people. So you could add another email here and you could send the email to two different people. And if you if you click on the drop down list, you've got this CC. This just means carbon copy and it will just send an exact copy of the email that you're gonna send to this person and then carbon copy it to this person. Uh, it's, it's almost the same as the two to be honest. There's not much difference between these two. But you have something called BCC, blind carbon copy. So if you wanted to send an email to this person, but you also wanted to send the same e email to this person, but you didn't want to know, you didn't want the first person to know you sent it to this person as well, then you can use this thing called blind carbon copy. So when I send this email out, they will both receive it, but the first one will not know that the second one also received this email. So that's uh, a little tip there. I hardly ever use blind carbon copy, but it's there if you ever need to use it. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna save that or send it. Um, so as I've been sending, I've sent out a couple of demo emails, you can see them in here. And what tends to happen is I will send an email. So let's say this client 01 email, this client email 01, I've sent that. So I'm gonna go to this folder and put it in here. Really this represented the company name, the company that sent me the email. All of these are the different companies that you would list here in your clients. And then you do the same for your suppliers. And if you have other, another type of uh, person in your organization, maybe you've got internal staff or something like that, you may have another folder here for internal staff and so forth. So as I, as I send and reply to these emails, these ones, for example, this is, uh, this is uh, client five, I start to drag and drop them into the folder so I can get clean my inbox. I, I see less emails now. And that's quite important for me. But if, um, let's say if client one replied to an email, I sent them an email back and they sent me an email back asking a question and I wasn't too sure what I sent them in the first place. All I really need to know is the subject or the client's name because then I can go to the sent folder and then I can search for client 01 and I can check to see what, what did I reply. This is a test reply. So the original email stays in this box here as the client's archive on your system. And then you've got this sent folder where you can filter out what you sent back to them. 
Um, this is another feature that I use quite often. So if someone sends me an email and I reply to it, and then they may phone me and ask me a question about the email I replied to, then I can go to the sent items, find that particular email, and then I can check what I said. And um, it helps me to work out any sort of questions they're asking. I can quickly find the answer to those questions. So that's another useful tip, searching the sent folder using the quick filter. That's quite a useful tool. I use that quite often. And you'll find that your sent items are going to get quite large. You're going to have thousands. In my sent items, I've got thousands of emails in here. I don't really archive them or manage the sent items. I just use it as an archive to check later what did I send and who did I send it to and what was the email about if I need to reference it back again. So that's another little tip there for you to help you um, organize and manage your emails. So um, sometimes you may want to filter out or group your emails together. So here you can click on date and you can have them ordered by date. That's quite a useful function. So you can put all the most recent ones at the top and it will go in by date order. I've only got some sample ones in here, but if you had loads of emails here from different days, then you'd have the most recent at the top and the older ones at the bottom. You can filter by who sent the email as well. Again, this is only an example, but you would have different email addresses in here from all the different people that sent you emails. So when you click on that, you typically see all of these emails grouped together and you see more of them grouped together below. That's another nice feature. And you can clearly filter or reorder by the subject name as well. So typically, so normally, yeah, typically when you send a, an email back to a client and they reply back to it, it's going to have the same subject and you can group those together. So you may see email client three, this, this email, you may see four of them in a, in a sequence. So you can see what happened. Um, that I use quite often as well when I'm using Thunderbird. So this was just a, a quick update just to show you some of the other features. Uh, there's, there's quite a lot more you can do with Thunderbird, but these are really the, the main features that I use on a daily basis. I tend to archive away my emails as I go through and reply to them. That helps me to keep my inbox clean. And I normally use this sent section here to go and check what emails I've sent uh, for future reference. Um, this, is, this is what I typically do. So let's see if there's anything else we've missed we've got deleted items here so in this folder if you ever delete an, an email but you need to get it back again so this is the supplier for email i deleted it if i want to get that back i can easily drag it from the deleted items back into the inbox and then i'll have that email back again if i need to reference back to it that's a, a simple way of getting back to it but if you go into this deleted items and you, if you drag it to the deleted items or if you right click on it and delete the message then it will stay in here but if you go into here and delete it one more time then it's pretty much gone it's gone for good you could say it's not really gone for good there are probably ways of getting it back but um, my advice is only delete what you need to delete and then you won't have a problem so I'll put that like this yeah We'll get rid of that. So let's see if there's anything else in here. There's this little button in the side here. And with this button, you can tick off other options that you want to see in these columns. So you can have things like received, the date it was received. Really, for me, one of these two, these are one of the same thing, to be honest. So I don't normally have this here. There's status, there's tags, you can have the tag showing. There's a few other things here that you can apply to the list, but typically you only really want the ones that are as default. These are the ones I normally have. You may want to show tags as well. That's your choice. Um, but I tend to not have tags showing. So you can have the tag here to say it's important. If you really want that there, that, that may become useful to you as well. Let's delete this one. So when we, when we right click on the message, so if I take this message here and I right click on it, open message in new tab, open message in new window, open in conversation. So if you select open in new tab, it creates this new tab for you here. 
and you can read the email and you can reply to it and do all the things that you want to do to it. If the email was quite long and had a lot of information in it or large images and you want to see it quite clearly, that's a feature that I use sometimes and it opens it in a new tab so you can maintain your inbox here and have a tab here, just like a web browser really, but you're, you, instead you, have it, you sort of have this in an email. You can also right click and open a new window and then you have a separate window where you can drag it across and um, you can you know you can have your your message here and you could even have the main application sitting next to it so that's another feature I don't normally do that but that's something that you might want to do let's see if there's anything else here you've got like reply to all senders or reply to all reply to list so there's quite a few different options in here you may want to read up on um, Mozilla Thunderbird website there's a help section you can get to I'm pretty sure from here you can get to the help section and you can find out a lot more information about the tools and all the different things that you can do with Thunderbird but I typically just use it as a standard email client and it works very well for me so it shouldn't be any problem working for yourself so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial it was only a quick demo and an update to my last tutorial if you haven't seen that last tutorial it was about getting really this email address working as a encrypted email on Thunderbird so you might want to follow that tutorial and a lot of the things that I did in that tutorial will help you to get a better understanding and this was just like a quick update just to clarify a few things that I might have missed during my last tutorial so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I look forward to seeing you on the next one